Ahoy hoy and welcome to the channel. I'm Dr. Sumerian, not a real doctor, and today we are going to talk about, actually play, a game called SCP Strategy. Uh, I got an email about 11 days ago with a Steam key to a uh, game called SCP Strategy by Luxo Interactive. Uh, for real quick, we'll go to the Steam page, and I should be clear, when I say that I got a Steam key, what that means is that I got the game for free. So, keep that in mind. Um, let's read the description about this game. SCP Strategy. Take on the role of the legendary administrator and start your own foundation protecting people from unknown objects. Every day there is information about new anomalies. Create special forces and send them to dangerous parts of the world to contain these anomalies. Cooperate with governments around the world. Acquire new technologies and increase your influence. Once you get to the most interesting SCP objects... Uh, start a series of research and tests to learn as much as possible about them. However, be sure to exercise caution as the slightest mistake can be catastrophic. Features organization management, searching for objects, conducting research on objects, defense of the organization, and object editor. Um, I will say from my experience playing the game that it's very primitive right now, but it is in early access, so they're probably going to be adding some of... I don't know that it i can't for a hundred percent say that it has all of these features uh <laughs> I, I didn't yeah it's basically just finding scps i'm gonna it's actually i'm looking at a uh one of the current reviews which is on the actual steam page and i think this is pretty accurate uh the game uh is basically just <laughs> the game i should say the gameplay cycle is just uh you know, build more sites, get more MTFs, and so on, and so on, and so on. That's it. And there's not a whole lot of detail to it, but let's go ahead and take a look at what it looks like, for starters. So, let's just get going here. Uh, this is the introductory screen. Hit the play button. I have an old game. Well, not an old game. It's a game I played or picked up when I first started. We'll just start a new one now. There we go. Music's nice. Relaxing. Go ahead and make it Jeremiah Sumerian, because why not? Hello, Jeremiah Sumerian. You've just founded an organization that studies unusual anomalies around the world. Your goal is to keep the world safe. Responsiveness is the basis of your action. Reports, checking, and anomaly research increases your score. When you reach 10,000 points, you win the game. So on and so forth. So you can create your branch anywhere on this map. Well, except for in the ocean. You can't create ocean bases yet. Maybe one day. Uh, and you can't really create right on the coast, which is uh, a little disappointing because I, I suppose that's close enough to where uh, Site 88 would be, but that's where I'm putting it down. Uh, this is the first anomaly. You received information about the first anomaly, but you don't have any MTF yet. These units will be responsible for checking anomalies. So you can create your uh, mobile task forces, and then you can just click a place to create the first unit. Might as well create it where there is a potential anomaly out here in the... Not quite the Amazon, a little bit south of the Amazon. Um, yeah, so this is the uh, this is the gameplay. Oh, and then there's the there is no pause, which I think is a very uh, a very big oversight right now. But perhaps it'll be something I'll add in later. You can go to slow and fast, and that's literally it. And I'm pretty sure it's paused while these tutorial things are coming on the screen. But when they're not on the screen, like when I'm on this screen, I'm pretty sure the game is still running in the background. Yeah, especially since this research status or the uh, development is actually continuing on. But yeah, you can move them. Um, just drag and click. You can just move them wherever you'd like them to go, and then you can hit the search button. This could probably stand to be automated, to be honest with you. I'm not saying it should, should be automated from the jump, but it should be the kind of thing that you should be able to automate after maybe a little bit of research. Speaking of research, we've got our first object. And this is one of the major problems I have with the game in that it, there is no pause functionari functionality. Uh, I think while you're on the research screen, at the very least, there should be a pause of the game. And if, let me be clear here, I don't think it is because the research continues unabated while you're on that screen. Uh, but the problem is, is that you can't read. I mean, you can, but if you do, you're going to not be, the game is just going to continue on. You can't actually read the SCP objects, which is 
a problem. Even if there isn't a pause button, there should certainly be a way to pause the game. Or I'm sorry, the game should at least pause inside menus like this. But it don't. If I hit automatic research, for example, let's uh, go ahead and click that. This is me re this is me reading it a little bit here. I mean, but while I'm doing this, the game is running in the background. Uh, I recorded some of the yep, there we go. And so the re you can see the research bar is progressing, which means it's not paused inside the menu. Which is again not a I not ideal for a game based around SCP objects where you may have to read things. Uh, and plus it also it really limits so for example, if you can see here uh, it, it progresses as you do more research. You learn more about the object, but you don't really get any chance to experience that because you really don't have time to read it. Uh, and also, I'm going to go ahead and upgrade this. I think. Yeah. So upgrading the site. Rename the site. Site 88. Of course we are, because that's my the site that I found it on, or I created on the SCP Wiki. Down South Alabama. Yeah, so you click this button, you hit the automated research, and you just have to move on. Can't take the time to read these long ass objects. I also would prefer it if they actually had the numbers on them, honestly. The number, number, number thing is a. It, it's not good. Not a good idea, I think. Also, research. Now, I'll say when I first, first started, I thought that the middle screen was the only screen. Um, and I thought that, like, you could scroll to the right but not i didn't know that you could scroll to the left because there's no indication that you could there is a little bit of an indication you could scroll to the right because it's something along the lines of um there'll be more later uh, once the game is developed further which is fine but of course you don't you know it's just that they could have done a little bit better with that's all we're gonna upgrade this the rest of the way because you need action points to do certain things. So now I can research two things, automatically research two things at a time. Let's see. Um, and honestly, the gameplay cycle is literally just this. Just more of this. You'll see that things pop up. You grab your MTF, you move it to a location that has an, uh, a potential anomaly. You hit the search button. This, again, should be automated. Or at least should be automatable. Because it's just monotonous to do the moving. And plus, uh, you'll see... I don't know if I'm do if, if i going to even get this far. Because I recorded a lot of uh, gameplay here. But um, you can get to the point where you can have two MTFs. More than two MTFs, really. But it's already... I mean, a fully upgraded MTF finds anomalies very quickly. Yeah, there we go. Go ahead and... I mean, even if... Even non-fully upgraded MTFs, but... Um, so yeah, you move there, hit the search bar, and look how fast this thing is gonna go. So, having a second one, like, because you have to micromanage it, there's very little point to having a second one. If we continue on for a while, you'll see that I go ahead and get a second one to demonstrate just how uh, difficult that is, but yeah. Again, I just, I don't know. It feels like the kind of thing you should be able to automate. I'm going to say that a bunch. And this is the gameplay cycle. This is it. As you progress, you'll get more money, you'll get more research points, uh, and you'll get more score, uh, which the score is surprisingly probably the most important uh, it's not a resource you don't spend it but it's the most important thing you have for your because uh... like money is easy to get research points are easy to get uh, action points are sort of I mean they're fairly easy to get once you get a couple of uh... what's the word I'm looking for once you get a couple of bases going but you just gotta wait for that score to go up before you can do some high-level research, which doesn't feel like a good gameplay mechanic. It's like, you must accomplish this much before I allow you to research the good stuff. See right there, I needed a score of 500 before I could do the uh, first manual types of um, research. 
which I think I'll keep going at least until you can see how manual research runs. Because that is uh, the only other part of gameplay that I think that hasn't been shown yet. So we want to do complex experiments. Or no, I'm sorry, we want to do manual research. I think complex experiments are possible. No, I won't be able to get to manual research. I will be able to get to complex experiments, I think. Here we go. I think we're going to try it. Were we going to try some manual research just to show how it works? Yeah, here we go. So this is the, I believe, non-biological or at least non-sentient uh, manual research, which is interesting. Um, the real issue I have is that when the whatever these things are come in from the top or the bottom of the screen, there's a lot less time to react to them. But I haven't so far had problems with... There's also, like, when does it end? <laughs> See, the other half of that. I actually don't know, because I've never actually had anything hit the central uh, anomaly yet when during the research, the manual research. Kind of got a little jerky there. Also, it's important to remember that you may end up uh, missing out on some anomalies because they're in the wrong hemisphere and you're just not looking there. Like, if you're like, where are all the anomalies? And the only thing you're looking at is Europe, North America, or possibly Asia, and you realize that South America has one, or uh, Antarctica has one. In a little while, I don't know if you'll see it in this part of the video, but there, <laughs> there's a fuck ton in Australia. Just because I haven't even got anywhere near Australia in a while. Because they, every time you find one, more start to pop up. So if there's a place you don't visit, then they're going to slowly accumulate there. Anyway, I think that's good enough, unless we can get to the waveform. We'll, do, we'll, we'll, we'll skip ahead to one of the waveform tests. Alright, here we go. This is pretty simple. Um... I'm used to these kinds of uh, things, although I'm used to being able to do it with keyboard control. That's too, uh, that's too flat. <laughs> oh, I guess it wasn't. I wasn't even paying too close of attention now while I'm doing this thing. All right, so we stretch it out, move it into place, make sure that the waveform is hitting the right peak size. So, nope, not stretch, squeeze, <laughs> and move it into position. That's for biological. Or I should say, uh, living creatures sort of thing. And again, it's um, it's quite interesting. Um, I would say... Uh, what is the price on this game? Let's double check. What does this cost? So right now it costs five ninety or four ninety nine. Okay, so if I were to... I, I cannot currently in good conscience recommend this game. It is just not developed enough though it looks like it has immense potential so if you're all right with sending five dollars over be for the sake of potential that's fine um they like they put a little they, they, they put they put a lot actually of care into the creation of this and it looks like it's on the road to being something good um yeah I'd say that there's a lot of problems as well. I mean, like, there's some there's some screenshots that show a lot of stuff going on at once, and I'm like, how? You can't pause the game. How did you get, what is this, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight MTFs uh, doing searches at the same time? I don't see how that's even possible. But, no, nine. There's a ninth no one up in the upper up the top of the thing. Actually, none of that makes any sense because there's so many. This is just an entirely photoshopped image, isn't it? Because there's, it's saying that there's only four out of four action points available, and they, but they've got like a two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven, <laughs> eleven different sites on this this one continent, and the it looks like at least one, two, three, four more that are connected to the north. So yeah, that's not a real screenshot. This one looks more realistic because you've got a bunch of MTFs that aren't doing anything. Um, yeah, I just don't... Um, the gameplay loop is is very rudimentary right now. But there is a lot of potential here. So if you feel like you're comfortable paying them $5 to make it... 
uh, work, then that's one that I uh, think this is perfect. This review says exactly what it is. Right now, it's more of an IOU notice than a game. There's a little bit of fun to be had, but it's not a full game. I honestly feel like they should uh, create a. They. <sighs> So I don't know what's going on behind the scenes for these guys. It's possible that the reason why this is being released as it is right now is because they basically ran out of development money and they need to really sell the game in order to create more income to continue developing it, which again, a lot of early access works this way. Um, but I think the final product should be more expensive. And I know that seems weird, but uh, the difference uh, the difference between perceived quality of a five dollar game and a fifteen dollar game or a twenty dollar game is fairly immense. I think fifteen dollars for something like this would probably be more reasonable, but only assuming they have much more content to play with, like you know attacks on the foundation and so on. Until that point, I'd say hold off on purchasing this unless you're really invested in making sure I will put the link to the steam page uh, in the description, but I can't in good conscience actually endorse your purchase of this game. Not yet. Again, maybe soon. And uh, if it gets more, um, if it gets to the point where I can, I will legitimately uh, go in and, uh, and will not edit this but i'll create a new video covering the new content and whether or not it's worth your uh, worth your time and money then but until that point thank you very much for watching if you enjoyed the video hit the subscribe button and then hit the notification bell next to that so you're notified when i upload new videos and then head on over to patreon.com forward slash d sumerian and pledge at any level like everybody here on the screen already has it's nice to know that i'm not alone out here and i'll see you all again on Tuesday.